Hello and welcome to New Tools Part 2, Revenge of the Refresh. We're going to be taking a look at some of the new tools Ryobi just announced and what I personally think of them. So let's get started. And first up we have a new grass shear slash shrubber. Overall the new design looks to be quite a bit different than the old design. It has an open style body grip instead of the enclosed style of the old version as well as more rubberized texture. It also appears to have a slightly longer handle as well as a bigger front section which could mean that it has a larger motor but until we get our hands on one we won't actually know that. And when it comes to the blades it appears that they've added more teeth to both the grass shear as well as the shrubber. So I think this will definitely be a a welcome improvement. So it should be interesting to see just how much better this new shrubber is versus the old one and if it's actually worth upgrading to but it does look promising. And next up we have a new tool, an 18 volt pruning shear. This is going to feature a brushed motor and will have a 3 4 inch cut capacity and will have bypass blades. So overall it looks to be a fairly decent tool. I will say from this picture there doesn't appear to be any sort of rubberized texture which is going to definitely be a bad thing in my opinion simply because well even on budget tools rubberized texture has been a part of the Ryobi system for quite a while. There's been a few tools in the past that didn't feature a rubberized texture but I really hope this isn't a sign of things to yet to come for Ryobi budget tools but overall this should be an interesting new tool. And next up we have the HP version. Now the HP version will obviously have a brushless motor which should be able to provide up to one and a half times faster cutting. It'll have an LED light on the front of it to illuminate if you're working in a dark, dark environment as well as a larger cut diameter. This can cut one inch instead of the three fourths inch. So overall this does appear to be a better tool. Is it going to be worth the higher price? Well maybe but we'll just have to wait and see once we figure out what the pricing is. And last but not least in the pruning category, we have a lopper. Now this lopper will feature a telescoping handle which can extend up to nine feet in length and will have a pivoting head at the very tip end of it, which will be able to be set into five different positions. Overall, this particular lopper looks to be fairly promising and will have a cutting diameter of about one and one fourth inch. So overall, this does look to be a promising tool and one I think a lot of people might end up purchasing simply because it does fill a gap in Ryobi's lineup. Well, and actually quite a few lineups. So overall, I am looking forward to this tool. And next up, we have an 18 volt mower. Now this 18 volt mower looks to actually be fairly promising because it has a 20 inch cutting capacity and it will feature dual active battery ports meaning that you'll be able to plug in two batteries at once and drain them at the same time. Now does that just mean you're going to have a longer run time or is that going to be giving you the equivalent of 40 volt power? I'm not really sure because they don't really specify what the electrical system's like in the description but if it does end up being a dual battery 36 volt sort of system this is something I've been hoping Ryobi would start doing and this would be a good thing for us consumers meaning that if you don't want to step up to a 40 volt system you wouldn't have to but let's get back to the mower it'll also have a storage compartment for two additional batteries that you can change out once you deplete the first two as well as a side discharge port and a bag for bagging i'm sure it'll also be capable of mulching and it features the cross cut system which means it'll have two different blades on it so overall this definitely looks like a promising mower and one i think a lot of people might be interested in because it'll be about the same size as a traditional gas powered mower so overall i do have high hopes for this particular mower and the fact that they're starting to incorporate the dual active battery ports is in my opinion a good thing because it means there's more options for us consumers. And next up we have Ryobi's new handheld interrogator, I mean cultivator. Overall this new cultivator should be very useful for interrogating prisoners of war, I mean working in raised flower beds or just hard to reach areas of your garden where you won't be able to fit that normal size cultivator. It will feature a three speed motor as well as a shield to protect your hand against flying debris as well as a forward handle in addition to the back grip. Overall, it does look to be fairly promising, and I actually can't wait to try one of these out. And I think quite a few people in different fields of work might actually have uses for this particular tool. So overall, I have to say I am excited for this tool as well. It seems to be that Ryobi is definitely filling up those gaps in their lineup of tools, and this is definitely going to be a unique tool to say the least. And next up, we have another new amazing blower from Ryobi. This new blower will be able to move air at 325 CFMs at air speeds of over 99 miles per hour but uh, under 101 miles per hour 
if you aren't getting my sarcasm right now, this is going to be kind of a weak blower, and I really don't see the appeal of this blower. I think if you're looking to work in a delicate area, this probably isn't even going to be that great of an option. I think a broom would still be a better option, but everybody has different tastes and preferences, and maybe some people might be interested in this blower. For me personally, I'm not, and I'm not going to bother reviewing it. So, moving on. And next up, we have a new HP Brushless Whisper Series 40 volt power washer. Now, I normally would be really excited about a tool like this because I really like battery operated power washer sort of so, kinds of tools. But with this particular tool, all my excitement dies the minute I see that price tag of $500. And then it dies completely after I see that rating of 500, 1,500 PSI. Overall, that rating isn't horrible until you realize that that's in its high power mode. The normal default mode is 1000 PSI. So overall, this just really is not worth the money that they're asking for it. I really hope the technology continues to evolve and we actually get a true high powered power washer with a reasonable price that is battery operated. But until that actually happens, I'm just going to have to keep waiting. And next up, we have Ryobi's new 40 volt push mowers or self propelled mowers. Now the push mower will be priced at around $300 and the self propelled mower will be priced at right around $360. And that might change depending on where you live. Overall, the design is fairly similar to last year's model, although I do think last year's model actually looked better. But the design is better because, well, it now features a side discharge port, which last year's model was lacking. So overall, I do think it's a worthwhile upgrade. For me personally, I'm probably not going to buy one of these right away, or maybe at all, because I'm fairly happy with last year's model. But it just depends on the person. So let's move on. And next up, we have a 40 volt brushless nine inch edger. Overall, I don't really know that much about edgers. I've never actually used one and I don't have a need for one. So for certain people, this might be an interesting tool, but for me personally, I don't have any interest. The only real specs I can find on it would be that the depth point depth adjustment can be adjusted from, let's see, 0 0.5 to two inches. So yeah. I don't know. I just don't know that much about them and I don't have a need for one, but it should be interesting for some people. Moving on. And next up, we have a new 40 volt, four gallon chemical backpack sprayer. Overall, it's a fairly simple design, which is reminiscent of their 18 volt version. And I think a lot of people will be happy with the new 40 volt system, especially if the only batteries they own are 40 volt batteries. I think this just goes to show that Ryobi is really serious about their 40 volt lineup and they're choosing to fill in a lot of the holes and gaps that was in that lineup. And I personally am happy with that decision because that means a whole lot of new tools for me to throw my 40 volt batteries into. So moving on. And next up, we have a 40 volt backpack brushless blower. Now, I actually owned the first version or the first 40 volt battery operated backpack blower and I was not a fan of it. It was heavy, it was bulky, the little uh, flexible port part in between the backpack and the wand or the blower tubes was just not good. It was made out of a hard plastic and it cracked and I just did not like it at all. It got returned. And overall, I have to say, I'm still not seeing that much of an improvement, at least from the pictures, what they're showing with the new one. Now, the new one is supposed to be more powerful. It's rated at 730 CFMs at an airspeed rating of 165 miles per hour versus the old one, which had a 625 CFM rating at the airspeeds of 145 miles an hour. So the new one does have better specs. But overall, it still looks like the same bulky design, and I just am not a fan of that design and this would not be the route I would go for a 40 volt or an electric backpack blower. I really think there are better options on the market available and we'll actually talk about one of those here in a second. And next up we have what I alluded to. Now this technically is a combo and you can purchase the backpack separately or you can purchase it with the blower. Now the backpack unit is what I'm primarily going to focus on since that's really the whole reason for showing you the picture. Now the backpack unit will be able to house th three 40 volt batteries and it'll also be able to charge them with an included charging adapter. Now, and that is kind of a cool feature when you think about it. Now all three of the battery ports on the backpack are active ports so me that means once you plug a battery into one of the ports you will have access to that power and quite frankly that really is a cool feature now once you plug the adapter into your blower or chainsaw or trimmer whatever you want to plug that into you'll be able to see how much power is in each battery via an led screen on the power battery adapter Overall, I have to say this is a tool I'm really looking forward to and I think it's going to be a popular one as long as the price isn't too insane. 
But my guess is we're going to be looking at a $200 plus price tag on this particular tool or accessory for tools. But for me personally, this is something I am highly interested in and will possibly end up getting in the future. So yeah, moving on. And next up, we have a new 40 volt brushless Whisper Series Tiller, a first from Ryobi. Now, I kind of have some doubts on this particular tool simply because, well, 40 volts just doesn't seem like enough voltage to actually get the job done in a lot of different environments. I think if you live somewhere where the ground is nice and soft or moist most of the year, it will probably do a fairly good job. But for those of us who live in a drier climate where the ground is as hard as a rock most of the year, this probably isn't going to be the number one choice for us. Now, I could be completely wrong, and this could be an amazing killer for everybody, but like I said, I kind of have my doubts on this particular model. Now, the specs are going to be 16 inches for its width or till capacity, and it'll be able to till down to 8 inches in depth. So overall, it does look to be like a fairly decent little tiller. Now, the price tag will probably be not so decent, but that's to be expected in today's world. So, moving on. And next up, we have, well, quite frankly, the previous tiller's big brother who's been taking steroids and works out daily or multiple times a day. This thing looks like a beast. Overall, this thing has an 18-inch rear tiller, and that actually is a fairly big tiller considering it's running off of batteries. Now, it's not running off one battery. It's not running off two batteries. It's not even running off of three batteries. It's running off of four 40-volt batteries that are six amps each. And that is, well, quite frankly, amazing. And I don't even want to know the price tag. Well, actually, I do want to know what the price tag is because I'm guessing the price tag is going to be right around the $2,000 mark or possibly even more. Overall, this really does look like a well-built tool, and I really think that it's geared more for the professional side of the market and not the average homeowner or consumer. But we'll just have to wait and see. I would love to be able to use this tool and try it out, but I don't think it's going to be something I'll be able to afford. But who knows, maybe I'll get lucky and somebody will give me one for free. <laughs> That's never going to happen. But overall, I have to say, I am looking forward to seeing how well this tool works, and maybe I'll be able to rent one or something in the future. But until it gets released, we'll just have to keep waiting to see what it's capable of. And next up, we have a new brushless Whisper Series blower that's part of the 40-volt series. Overall, this new blower is definitely an upgrade to last year's model, and it looks very similar to Ryobi's top-tier model, although this is a different model. Now, this model will be able to move air at 600 CFMs at an air-rated speed of 155 miles per hour. So, it is going to be an interesting blower, and it's definitely an upgrade to last year's model, which could do 125 mile an hour air speeds at 550 CFMs. So, overall, is it going to be worth it? Well, for some people it might be. If you live somewhere where it rains a lot and you have to deal with wet leaves a good chunk of the time, it probably will be. But for the people who live in a drier environment, you probably won't need to upgrade. But overall, it definitely is an improvement to last year's model. So, moving on. And next up, we have a 40 volt HP series brushless Whisper Series 17 inch carbon fiber shaft trimmer. Now, overall, this looks to be like a, well, a very nice trimmer. But unfortunately, it is not a detachable or accessible, accessory capable trimmer. You're going to be stuck with that grass trimmer head because it's kind of built in. The, the way this trimmer is designed is that the motor head is powered by a brushless motor that's right on top of the bump head or the string head or the thing that holds the string, whatever you want to call it. And so that means the wires in order to power that head run down through the trimmer shaft, meaning that it's not really designed to have a detachable shaft. So overall, for me personally, I'm not really too interested in this one. I'm personally more interested in attachment capable trimmers simply because of the flexibility and ease of use. And if something goes wrong with the shaft, you can change it. But I can see some people maybe having an interest in it and well, maybe they'll buy it. But for me, no. And last but not least, we have a new 18-volt LED spotlight. Now, the new LED spotlight does have some major improvements over the previous generation. It's going to be lighter, it's going to be smaller, it's going to be more compact, and it's also going to be brighter. So those are all good things. They've also added a medium and low mode in addition to the high mode, and they've added a belt clip, which is also going to be a welcome feature. And the new model will also have more rubberized texture. Now, some bad news is they've removed the 12-volt feature from the previous model, where you could plug the previous 
juice model into a cigarette lighter via a cable and power it that way. And that is a major downside to this new model. And something they could have did that they didn't do, which I wish they would have done, is add a pivoting head, which would make this a far more versatile light. But I don't know, maybe Ryobi's trying to protect Big Brother Milwaukee for some strange reason. But for me personally, I'm not going to probably upgrade to this new model simply because I really enjoy having that 12 volt function and that is worth more to me than the new features or new upgrades. So everybody's different, everybody has different preferences, but for me personally, I'm not too interested in the new model simply because they removed that one feature. And that is it for this video. Ryobi has announced several other tools, including pole saws, chainsaws, hedge trimmers, and a couple other small tools here or there. But for this video, this is where I'm cutting it short. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. God bless.